The Lord be with you. We welcome you to Prince of Peace. We are so glad to have you with us today as we gather in Christ's name. We want to welcome especially all those who may be worshiping with us for the first time or who are guests of others. We say it frequently, but we mean it sincerely. We believe that none of us are here by accident. Each and every one of us, we are here by God's design. And as we worship today and as we gather in Christ's name, may Christ use us to be his people who serve him in love and serve others in love. We want to remind you as a part of that love, uh, the safety measures that we uh, have here at Prince of Peace, Prince of Peta Paz for our COVID uh, measures. We practice the three W's. Uh, wash your hands, wear your mask over your nose and mouth, that's required, and also watch your distance. And I know that as we go week after week and get a little more full with people coming out, perhaps they have gotten their vaccine. Even if you've gotten your vaccine, you'll notice that with Disney, they still require you to wear a mask over your nose and mouth. Uh, if you find yourself in a row where you think, you know, my social distancing, watching my distance is a little more difficult, don't feel self-conscious about just moving around a little bit. That is okay. We understand everyone's comfort level is a little different. Pastor Ludwig is joking around over here because he's got Debbie sitting near him, but yes, and she works at the airport, Pastor. You should be aware of that. We have uh, in our worship today, we're going to be doing a ministry minute talking about National Lutheran Schools Week and some photos of that. And Julianne Wigand, our director of our preschool, is going to be speaking. Also, we are preparing for next week, a Super Bowl Sunday. Our typical fundraiser for our food pantry is on Super Bowl Sunday. It's been branded in the past as the Super Bowl of Caring, which is a national program. We're probably going to find something that is more descriptive of what happens here at our congregation. And we actually have a little video for you to see as we uh, think about the food pantry and the way we serve others. Our ministries at Prince of Peace, Principe de Paz, touch many lives with God's love, especially our food pantry. One Saturday every month, we give food to more than 300 families who depend on us. Some arrive hours early to get a place in line, and more people are coming to us for food because of the pandemic. The number of families needing our help has increased by about 13%. Many people have heard of our food pantry and two TV stations have done stories showing how we help thousands of people. And a local church saw hundreds of families at their monthly food distribution. Prince of Peace Lutheran Church holds distribution drives every month, but yesterday they offered a drive-through version because of COVID-19 concerns. Officials with the church say they understand the serious financial issues many people are facing because of the pandemic. They're just passionate about helping people with food insecurity to be able to make a difference in our community. A now drive through food pantry that has gone from serving 300 to about 400 families in the past few months. The need has been more than that, but that's about our capacity, what we've been able to handle. The people who get food from us are grateful. There's something that we all appreciate, that this church is doing these beautiful things for the neighborhood. Cars more than fill our parking lot at every month's food distribution. The overflow can stretch three blocks on Curry Ford Road, proving how important this ministry is to hundreds of families. Please help by praying for our food pantry ministry, and please contribute to the special offering on Super Bowl Sunday to help fund this important blessing to our neighbors. We'll show you more about our food pantry next week. Thank you. Of course, our food pantry is one of our signature, our flagship ministries here at Prince of Peace as well as our preschool, our Center of Paz Para La Vida, which provides uh, uh, English language classes in our Hispanic ministry, and of course, our youth ministry as well. Continue to keep all those ministries in your prayers. As we talk today about God's call, we also look at what it means for us to be called to love. And at this point, please stand, greet one another, welcome each other with a, a a hand wave, an air hug, blow a kiss. God's blessings on your worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the words of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, and active in faithfulness and uprightness. He pro provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. The one who pardons, heals, and strengthens all who repent calls us to name our failings and our hopes. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and all-powerful God, who commands all spirits, comforts those in distress, and casts out destructive forces, we confess that we are unable to do your will. We protect what is familiar and reject what is unknown. We admire those with courage but excuse ourselves when we falter from the truth. We forget that you are always with us and that with you all things are possible. Forgive us, lead us, make us new. Remove our desire to heed false prophets and show us your way. This we confess in the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The God who made you and knows your every thought hears you now and forgives all your sin. You have been redeemed through Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, who is Alpha and Omega, all in all. Thanks Amen. be to God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> in peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy host, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have shown us in Christ that your love is never ending. Enable us to love you with all our hearts and to love one another as Christ loved us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is taken from, the, from 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Now about food sacrifice to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know, but whoever loves God is known by God. So then about eating food sacrifice to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god, and since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights do not become a stumbling block to the weak. For someone with a weak conscience sees you, with all of your knowledge, eating at an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister, for whom Christ died, is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were so, all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching 
and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. During these past several weeks, we have been talking about the call of God and what that means for us specifically, that God has called us to be followers of Jesus, to keep our eyes fixed on him, for he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And then also, as we follow him, to be imitators of him, to share his love with others, and to demonstrate his care. So today we're talking about called to love and what that means. That perhaps might be the highest call for us as God's people to love as Jesus loved others, because we know that Jesus' love was exhibited in such a way that he gave his life for the world. In fact, the type of love that is being spoken of many times in the Bible with the word, the Greek word agape, speaks about a self-sacrificing love, one that pours itself out for others so that they then would experience love because someone has sacrificed for them. And we see how that plays out with Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross for us, the call to love. Today we're looking at the second lesson, the lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And as Paul writes to the Corinthians, you could perhaps make the case that they have a love deficit disorder there. In fact, the whole 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, is all about love. And although the people had so many significant gifts, so many things that they could boast about, the Apostle Paul says, if you don't love all these things, all these things that you're able to do for God, all these things that you're able to show others, all these things that even you're able to speak for God, if you don't have love, these things amount to nothing. And in the lesson today from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, it seems that there is a, a divide or a dichotomy between knowledge and love. If you know anything about the city of Corinth in ancient times, very sophisticated place. People were perhaps highbrow. They were able to debate ideas. They were very proud of what they knew. They were also, many of them, they were born into a status that perhaps others did not have. And it seems that when you take a look at the Corinthian church and what Paul is writing throughout 1 Corinthians, God's people there are debating too much what they know and who they know and how they came to that knowledge. In fact, one author in giving a description or an introduction to the Corinthian letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, said that everyone there fashioned themselves as an expert. Have you ever encountered someone who thinks they know it all? You just love to hear from those people, don't you? Especially when they don't know exactly what they're talking about. You're thinking about somebody right now. And in the Corinthian church, they would debate all types of petty things. You know, I, I came to faith through Paul. I came to faith through Peter. I follow so Cephas. I, I follow Jesus. And so as they debated with each other and tried to one-up each other, it was apparent that they were very prideful. And so the apostle Paul reminds them, this is not who you are to be. You are to be the humble people of God who follow Jesus. And somehow their knowledge overtook their love. And they exhibit this, exhibited this love deficit disorder. The Apostle Paul writes, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 
we know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something yet do not know as they ought to know, but whoever loves God is known by God. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Knowledge puffs up because it can be filled with hot air sometimes, especially when it is being used as some sort of symbol of prideful knowledge. I know this, you don't. And in the church in Corinth, one of the issues that they faced when they had this debate about who knows what, who knows who, and who knows what's most important in God's eyes centers on this thing, food sacrificed idols. Now, nothing could be really further from our personal experience, I think, in terms of our cultural context than what Paul's talking about here. I could probably spend, or someone else could probably spend a lot better than me, an entire Bible class talking about that. Did that raise an eyebrow for you when that was read? Now about food sacrificed to idols. Now in their pagan context, what they would do is this, not the Christians, but those who worshiped other gods, worshiping idols in temples, in the, the pagan temples, they would offer some sort of sacrifice to the God, the so-called God with the hope or the expectation that that God would somehow give them something in return, some sort of blessing. In our context, it might be someone who does something so that they might have a little bit of luck down the line. There's some sports that are going to be going on next week. I imagine there are some rituals next week in the Super Bowl that some of those players have that they are not going to depart from because they believe that if they do that ritual, they're going to have some sort of benefit. It's some way of trying to control the outcomes. And so in pagan society, in pagan culture, and in pagan worship, they might offer a sacrifice of some sort of food to the idol. And whatever the idol <laughs> did not eat, and idols didn't eat because they were made out of wood or gold or silver or stone, then the priest could have. And then whatever's left over after that could be sold. Think of it being sold at the secondary market. And some Christians, they looked and they said, you know, there is no such thing as a God behind those, those idols. And so this is, this is an expensive food. I'm going to buy that. That's good stewardship. And other Christians said, you know, I used to worship at that temple. And that's too close to comfort to my pagan background. I don't think anyone should be eating that food. And they would debate about this. And some claimed, we've got more knowledge than you. You should be listening to us. What was lost in that equation? Love. And so as God's people are weighing this out, as the Apostle Paul speaks to them, he reminds them, there is one God, but one God, the Father from whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. You think about the love of Jesus, how he demonstrated that love. It was not enough for God simply to say, I love the world. It was not enough for God simply to send his son Jesus to show love to people as he spent time with them and healed them and as he blessed them and as he cast out demons. It was not enough for God to do those things. But God had to demonstrate his love not only by having boots on the ground, but by also going to the cross through Jesus Christ to bear the sins of all, living perfectly so that we might inherit his righteousness and on the cross, he's saddled with our guilt and our shame. That's a self-sacrificing love. Jesus wanted to know us so intimately that he brought his love in that way so that we might be covered with his love and his grace and his peace and changed forever. 
Paul's words, but whoever loves God is known by God. Now, I have to say, when I think about that, that phrase, whoever loves God is known by God, I can think of things that, does God know that? He knows that about me? How can he love me? That thing that I said, that thing that I did, those choices that I made, the way I, I really pushed people's lives, and I pushed them away, maybe even pushed them away from God, how I pushed my family away at sometimes, you know, our sins. He knows those things, and yet he loves us? Absolutely. It was for that reason that he came. He knew that left to our own devices, we would destroy it all our lives, the lives of others. And so his love comes to overcome all, to transform us all. You know, someone once said, people won't care what you know until they know that you care. Have you ever heard that before? Jesus demonstrated at every turn his care. And he has made known to us the God who cares about us. I also wonder, what do people think of when they think of the church? What do they expect to see when they see the church or hear about what churches are doing? Perhaps they don't expect to see what we've been doing with our food pantry for years or the ways in which we demonstrate God's love here at Prince of Peace, Prince of Pay de Paz, with tremendous excellence and tremendous care for people. But what do people have as their impression who are standing outside of the church? I think sometimes they expect people in the church to show how much they know, not how much they care. And in fact, some people in the church, I think, take it upon themselves to go out and tell everybody what they know about God and what, what they should be doing, other people, what they should be doing, what they should be changing about their life, and how they should know this about God or else something bad's going to happen to them. But the people to whom they're speaking don't really know that we as God's people care. Have you ever wondered about that? God sends us into this world to demonstrate that we love the God who loves all people. He sends us into this world so that we would demonstrate that we serve the God who cares the God who knows us intimately, and yet he loves us to the very end, going to the cross to die for us, that he has shown us such care and love that he sends us forth into this world so that we might care and love for others so that they might get to know the God who already knows them. And they might be able then to show his love, his care, his mercy being transformed by his power. May God, the God of love, who calls us to follow after Jesus, enable us by his spirit to embody that love to a world that desperately needs to know that God cares. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise as we sing.
You may be seated, and I want to invite uh, our preschool director, Julianne Wiegand, to come forward. She, she has a message for all of us. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Nice to take this off. <laughs> um, there, there's probably going to be a bunch of slides before me, behind me. But um, this past week, we had the opportunity to participate with, with all LCMS schools and National Lutheran Schools Week. Um, and I believe, from what my staff says, this is the first time in decades that Prince of Peace has had the opportunity to participate in it. Um, what was really awesome about this week was that the kids had the opportunity to have a Zoom call with a school in Kingston, Jamaica on Friday, um, which was really, really cool. Um, and of course, they're all preschoolers, so their big thing was just waving and saying hi to each other, which was really interesting. Um, the, the other thing that was really great about this week that was that the entire congregation, staff, preschool of Prince of Peace was able to come together to help the kids really learn about Jesus. Um, all of us as the ministry staff had the opportunity to do chapel with the kids. Pastor B came in on, um, I'm sorry, Eric came in Tuesday with this little present <laughs> uh, to teach the kids about different gifts and things that God gives us. And I think every day, then Pastor B was Wednesday with a little bigger box. Lee Heels was bigger on Thursday, and then I didn't know what I was going to do on Friday. So I had to wrap a big cardboard box, and that was like the thing of the week. But <laughs> what, what, what I find really important and what struck me this week was just the teamwork and the participation and the unity among everybody. The kids were excited. The parents were excited. I know we were all excited as a staff. And I have to give a lot of kudos to Eric Gherkin because he was the one that really spearheaded this event. Um, this was definitely a week of celebrating our Lutheran schools. It was a little difficult toward the end of the week for me emotionally because I had to reflect on what Lutheran education meant to me when I found out that my alma mater, Bronxville, Concordia Bronxville, is going to be closing after this summer. So it gave me the opportunity to reflect on what Lutheran education meant to me and the amazing opportunity we have at Prince of Peace to bring Jesus to these kids and make a lifelong impression the same way I had that opportunity throughout my lifetime. So this, this was just an amazing week, and I hope we have the opportunity to work together again with more events in the future. I know Eric and I are going to be working on different different things to give everybody more opportunities to work together with the preschool. So, thank you. And I want to add that Julianne has been doing a great job at the preschool, and she really deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Please stand and let us confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the needs of the world, saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You may be seated. For the healing of the earth and all its creatures, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the church's willingness to cast out demons in its midst, for congregations that are in turmoil, and for the healing of divisions between the followers of Christ Jesus, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For leaders of nations, for those who have great wealth, for those who have too much power, for those who have destructive weapons, and for those who have none, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those who are victims of others' idolatry, for children who have no one to listen to their cries for food and shelter, for parents who cannot answer the needs of their children, 
for peacemakers and diplomats, for those who give through charities, for those who use the law to make policies for greater good, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For all who are in pain and in need of care, especially those we name aloud or silently, Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For President Biden, for Congress and judges, for all who make and administer our laws, for our local leaders that they would use their power to protect the people, and for peace among political parties in our midst, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For protection against the coronavirus, for our hospitals and health centers, for doctors and nurses and other health workers, for effective vaccination program that would cover the whole nation and the whole world, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, and those it would be easy to forget. We ask your, for your blessing on all people that we may come at last to the truth around your banquet table that has no end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, so we pray today, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
Lord's table, take and eat the body of Christ as we break. Take and eat the body of Christ. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Now go out from this place to a world fully known by God. Where there is fear, remember the authority of Christ Jesus. Where there is need of love, give it. Where there is pain, bring peace. For you are loved by the one who redeems and freed to live by the word of life. We go forth empowered by the Holy Spirit to share the love and grace of Jesus Christ with friends, family, neighbors. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.